Hey guys, welcome to Rodbotics. Today I'm going to show you the magic panel that I've been working on. Uh, from what you can see here, this is kind of my little test bench. Uh, just running two Marduinos, just the version 2 code. I have my uh, Wi-Fi transmitter and then the magic panel hooked up. Just over here, my little uh, makeshift um, power supply. And what I'm going to show you guys today is how I made this panel. Everything's already been uploaded to the Astromech website. I'll provide that link below. And uh, it'll give you the opportunity to hopefully make one for your own R2-D2. And it's a real simple design. Um, everything is running off the juggler's code that is already provided uh, in the Astromech forum. Uh, right now, I'm running a serial connection to it. So I have the option actually to run either I2C or serial to it. And it's just running off of an Arduino Nano, just a little knockoff clone, so it's like $3. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with the design. Uh, I worked with uh, another builder, uh, John, who actually came up with a three design mount and uh, lens. So you can see here's a lens for it, here's the mount. Uh, so yeah, let's dive in and see how this thing works. Okay, so the way that this board works is it uses the Max 7221 LED driver, and that's able to run eight by eight matrix. So 64 individual LEDs can be run. And the way it does this is it connects the anodes and the cathodes of the LEDs in such a way that it is able to turn on an individual row and an individual column, thereby completing the path and opening up one LED or however many LEDs you want. So if you wanted to double check to make sure that all the continuity was correct and how the paths work, you could actually see here that these two go down to next to zero on a resistance so they're connected. And that's gonna be the same for all of these in this column here, okay? Now, if we wanna to check to make sure that the other side is connected, we're gonna double check here and we can see now that this on the top side is all connected because it goes down to a zero resistance. But we can see here that the bottoms are not connected. It stays at a high resistance, meaning that they're not connected. So the way that it works is an individual column and an individual row is called up in the MAX7221. And if the path is connected, the two pads will basically get a voltage through it and it will turn the LED on. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply some solder paste. So I'm gonna do uh, this in the reflow oven. So if you're gonna use a reflow oven, um, you're gonna need to use two different types of solder paste, just like a regular solder paste, and you're gonna need a low temperature solder paste. Because since we're gonna be soldering on both sides of this, if we put the same solder paste on both sides and then when we go to flip it over, well, all the pieces that you soldered on this side are gonna fall off. So what I have here is I basically just have some old circuit boards that I use to kind of hold this in place. And what I've ordered because I'm lazy and uh, I like to get things done a little bit faster is I ordered this template. As you can see here, it's got two profiles. This is the side for the LEDs. And this is the side for the, um, the max uh, 7221 and then the resistors and capacitors. So right now I'm going to do the resistors and the capacitors and uh, the LED driver. So all you really have to do is just kind of line them up. Get that lined up. I see them. There we go. Okay, and you'll see everything kind of lines up and it gets in there so let me see if i can zoom in a little bit so you can see 
So you can kind of see that when I push it down, all the pads are right there. Okay, so now we'll get the solder paste ready. And again, I just use like an old circuit board that I have lying around. I have a lot of these. And you can see that the paste is still okay. So I just take a little bit out. You can use, you might have to use my finger. Let's grab the big circuit board here. So that's probably way too much. Uh, we'll just put it back after and all I'm going to do is just apply some pressure and gently push it down and we just want to make sure that we get it nice and everything is in there because what this is going to do is this is the solder and a flux and this allows the reflow to work and then we just kind of gently remove this. Try not to put that aside. And see if we can zoom in again. And you can kind of see that it's not shining anymore and it's got little blobs of solder paste on it. So I'm just gonna get the components on there and we'll keep going. Now we wanna make sure that we put this max uh, chip on correctly. There is a little dot on here which corresponds to this little notch. So you want to make sure that we do uh, locate this correctly. So I sped this area up just to uh, save on some time. It's just really placing the components on the solder pads. Uh, so I did put the MAC 7221 oriented correctly. I got the resistor on and I put the two capacitors in place. So I keep the capacitors actually separated until I need them just because they look so similar and I don't want to have a chance at mixing any of them up. Once I finished putting on the components, I just got my reflow oven ready and I'm going to reposition the camera so we can take a look at that. All we have to do now is just, like I said, pop this in the oven. So it's real simple. Just open it up. You can pull out this little tray. I'm just going to put it right close to the middle. Now inside here, I have a little thermocouple. I'm just going to try and reposition that. I haven't used it in a while. I'm going to close the door. I'm going to choose which profile. So I'm using a uh, regular paste here. So let's choose our profile. This is the profile that we have. It's gonna peak at 250 degrees Celsius. Okay, we're gonna choose that one. Now all we gotta do is hit run profile. And that's it. And it's still pretty hot. As you can see, it's still around 96 degrees inside there. So, I'm going to use a little pair of tweezers or something like that to pull it out, and then we'll take a quick peek at it. Yep, it's still pretty hot. All right, so I don't know if we can kind of see it, but all the joints look pretty nice. They're all pretty shiny. So that's a good sign. Um, yeah, it looks like it's a good, whoop. Hey, nothing actually broke. Well, let's go ahead and check the board out. Solder joints are all nice and shiny, which is always a good sign. You don't see any solder bridges, which is a really good sign. So it looks like everything's good, but we won't be able to fully test it until um, we solder everything else up and see if there's any issues on the board. Okay, so I kind of just set myself up here. Um, I have my little pin header. And I have my female headers here. So the female headers are what 
you know, you put in for the Arduino to attach to. Um, and the pin headers are just something that we can connect our systems to. So I like to make them as straight as possible. And the way that I do that is I kind of just shove them inside of one of these breadboards. And then I'll take my breadboard and hold up my piece. And that way it just kind of gives you a more stable platform. So now we got our pins on there. You can see your pins fairly straight. I don't know if I can show it. Um, but it's a good connection. Everything looks good and we'll clean that up after. Okay, now we gotta get these headers on. So I'm gonna take my Arduino that I already have and we'll just put this on. That way we can make sure that these are also gonna go on nice and straight and it's gonna fit on an Arduino. Doesn't matter how you put it right now because it's gonna just sit there anyways. And that's it. So those pins are soldered up and we're good to go. Okay, so I'm going to put the LEDs on now and uh, I realized that I made a mistake and that I put the standoffs already on here and because the pins are poking through, I couldn't use my template to uh, put the solder paste on. So I just put it on by hand Let's see if it'll focus there. And it's obviously not as clean as it could be, but I think it'll still be okay because once it goes into the uh, reflow oven, the solder paste is usually gonna stick to the pads. So it should be okay. So let's go ahead and put all of our LEDs in place and uh, we'll throw it in the oven. Okay, we've got all the LEDs on. Hopefully they're all oriented correctly. And uh, we're gonna throw it in the reflow oven and get it soldered up. Here's the uh, original panel that we started with. This is the one that actually has uh, a little bit dimmer LEDs. Uh, it was one of my first kind of prototype boards. And then I found these newer LEDs uh, that I'm using now and recommending. So I will plug it in and let's hope it lights up. So first, just got to take our Arduino, plug that in. Good. Take our ground and voltage in. And our signal from the Mark Arduino. Flip it on. Oh. And nothing. What did I do wrong here? Oh. Flip the voltage. There we go. signal pin came a little loose there that's it it's working so now we would just connect that to our r2 touch app 